November 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 18 from the New Testament. After these things I saw another angel, who possessed great authority, coming down out of heaven, and the earth was lit up by its radiance. He shouted with a powerful voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a lair for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detested beast. For all the nations have fallen from the wine of her immoral passion, and the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have gotten rich from the power of her sensual behavior. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so you will not take part in her sins, and so you will not receive her plagues because her sins have piled up all the way to heaven and God has remembered her crimes. Repay her the same way she repaid others. Pay her back double corresponding to her deeds. In the cup she mixed, mix double the amount for her. As much as she exalted herself and lived in sensual luxury, to this extent give her torment and grief because she said to herself, I rule as queen and am no widow. I will never experience grief. For this reason, she will experience her plagues in a single day, disease, mourning, and famine, and she will be burned down with fire, because the Lord God who judges her is powerful. Then the kings of the earth who committed immoral acts with her and lived in sensual luxury with her will weep and wail for her when they see the smoke from the fire that burns her up. They will stand a long way off because they are afraid of her torment and will say, Woe, woe, O great city, Babylon, the powerful city, for in a single hour your doom has come. Then the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn for her because no one buys their cargo any longer. Cargo such as gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all sorts of things made of citron wood, all sorts of objects made of ivory. All sorts of things made of expensive wood, bronze, iron, and marble. Cinnamon, spice, incense, perfumed ointment, frankincense, wine, olive oil, and costly flour. Wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, and four-wheeled carriages, slaves, and human lives. The ripe fruit you greatly desired has gone from you, and all your luxury and splendor have gone from you. They will never, ever be found again. The merchants who sold these things, who got rich from her, will stand a long way off because they are afraid of her torment. They will weep and mourn, saying, Woe, woe, a great city dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet clothing, and adorned with gold, precious stones, and pearls, because in a single hour such great wealth has been destroyed. And every ship's captain and all who sails along the coast Seamen and all who make their living from the sea stood a long way off, and began to shout when they saw the smoke from the fire that burned her up. Who is like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads and were shouting with weeping and mourning, Woe, woe a great city in which all those who had ships on the sea got rich from her wealth, because in a single hour she has been destroyed. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, For God has pronounced judgment against her on your behalf. Then one powerful angel picked up a stone like a huge millstone, threw it into the sea, and said, With this kind of sudden violent force, Babylon, the great city, will be thrown down and it will never be found again. And the sound of the harpists, musicians, flute players, and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No craftsman who practices any trade will ever be found in you again. The noise of a mill will never be heard in you again. Even the light from a lamp will never shine in you again. The voices of the bridegroom and his bride will never be heard in you again. For your merchants were the tycoons of the world, because all the nations were deceived by your magic spells. The blood of the saints and prophets was found in her, along with the blood of all those who had been killed on the earth. God, when I'm reading these chapters in Revelation, especially this one, 
I keep thinking about the United States. I know the United States wasn't in existence when this was written, but it just feels like our, our name should be there instead of Babylon. We produce so much material things here in the United States. And we have so many people who buy material things. I'm one of them. I suspect that based upon your will, it is with intent of what we do with these things. Am I buying these things because they are becoming idols to me? Because I need one more shirt? Because I need one more brand name pair of pants? Same thing's true for houses and cars and, and everything else that is materialistic in our lives. And even goes on to talk about how even normal common things like people getting married and music, uh, suddenly that whole part of you was removed from that. I mean, instead of making them about beautiful joyful things things that that bring you glory they became things of materialistic value for satan or in this case the prostitute um, they weren't for your glory anymore and i think about how many things in our lives we can use for your glory versus for satan's you know a lot of people think that the internet is definitely a tool by satan and it can be, it definitely can be, but here, like at Daily Video Bible, you're using the internet for your glory. I think almost everything we look at can be used for your glory if looked at in the right way. Not everything, but most things can be looked at for your glory, but we have to use them in the right way. This your glory versus materialistic things uh, even showed up in one of the commentaries I was reading about this particular chapter of Revelation where it said, that her uh, delusion of affluent security also finds a parallel in, bl in blind self-reliance. I think that speaks volumes about the society we're in right now, God, where we are so self-reliant, we're so independent. Uh, we want to do things on our own and in our own way, and we end up getting ourselves into all sorts of these situations where, um, where Hollywood stars are idols, where singers, famous singers are idols, where sports people have become idols in our lives, where things of luxury, even horrendous songs are written about extreme luxury, uh, TV shows about extreme luxury, that we have just gotten ourselves into all of these situations of self-reliance and it's also eventually then caused uh, problems of delusion, uh, of thinking that we're okay because at least we're not as bad as so-and-so. Whereas you're really clear, our, our level of comparison shouldn't be other people, but our level of comparison should be your son, uh, the perfect sacrifice. And even though we will never be perfect here on earth, we should still keep trying to work towards that. God, we have so much here in the United States that it almost becomes, I would say it definitely in my case, became a burden to me where my delusional choices led me straight down a path of uh, material things. Exactly what Revelation is talking about. That was my whole life. I wasn't being a mean person. I wasn't killing people. I wasn't worshiping Satan. Um, I was a nice person. I was going to church, but my kingdom, my acquisition of wealth uh, was all about me. It had nothing to do with glorifying you. And I see this as a direct result of our self-reliant choices, of our self-focused choices, that it's all about us. God, today allow us to make it all about you. Allow us to look at our lives and take a look at our kingdoms and how big they are. And what can we do to make our kingdom smaller, smaller and yours larger? Do we really need that one more tchotchke? Do we really need that one more dress? Do we really need that one more relationship? Do we really need whatever has become an idol in our life? Do we really need that one more two hours of TV watching? Uh, three hours playing games on, on the internet? God, allow our lives not to be self-reliant. You have a plan for us and it's way better than anything that we could actually come up with. And no matter how, we, how hard we try, on our own we are always sucked into exactly what the prostitute and the beast and uh, the dragon and all of those creatures we're sucked into everything uh, that they're flaunting right in front of us and making all sparkly it is so easy 
for Satan to do his work here in the United States especially. We are so sidetracked by material possessions. God, allow what is here on earth to continue to glorify you in each and every one of our lives. Have us take a look at the things of our lives and really take a look and see if they glorify you or do they glorify our future uh, worship of this prostitute. And in this case, I'm referring to the United States whose wealth and desire for material possessions is completely out of control. God, allow us to see beyond this world to the freedom that you've given us to the hope in eternal life, to ultimately getting to worship and glorify you completely without any distractions or any self-reliance on our part. God, allow our lives to look different to other people. Allow our lives to look different in the sense that we aren't seduced by worldly things, that we aren't seduced by the things of this world that our lives do look different to non-believers, that our lives become part of our testimony in glorifying you, God. God, I pray for, I pray for strength because the world is a very strong and attractive place to be seduced by, especially here in the United States. And I pray for everyone listening to this video for that strength, to pull away from the wor what the world wants to seduce you with and seek only what you want for us, God. I pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.